Okay, so back here in Autodesk 3ds Max. So now I wanna start configuring um, my palettes. I'm gonna configure nine different options that will combine into uh, three options with three variations each. So I'm just going to uh, import the file that we pushed out of Substance, the FBX file. All right, looks great. And then I'm just going to start aligning these boxes to the um, to the palette. All right, so now that that's done, I can see that my pivots are not um, centered to the object. So I'm just going to grab those here really fast. And I'm going to center them to the object. But maybe I want to align them to um, to the minimum. Center minimum. Okay. Center minimum. Okay, that's better. So now I'm going to start arranging these um, in varying and interesting ways. Uh, you just want to make sure that you leave just a little bit of space between each one for the um, so that the phys physics cages aren't intersecting with each other. And yes, this will cause them to settle, but that's all right because they're cubes. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and configure about nine pallets of, uh, of this. I have, um, I have my nine different pallet configurations and we're gonna consolidate these down into three sets of three variations. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that uh, here in 3ds Max. So first thing we need to do is uh, I just need to create a dummy and place that there. And then what I'd like to do is start aligning the palette groups with the dummy because I want everything to be sitting at zero. So I'm just going to do that and then uh, on the Z there, palette group two align to the dummy that 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 apply the minimum okay and finally that guy dummy okay cool so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh I'm gonna hide the palette groups that I don't need and just keep the one that I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and send, I'm gonna create the variants now, I'm gonna send this into create. So uh, in your create panel, it's a lot of create, but in your create panel under uh, helpers here, you're gonna to wanna to drop that down to NVIDIA Omniverse and uh, just create an Omni variant. Oh, I need to make this layer active, got it. Omni variant. And I'm just going to drag it out, make it nice and big so I can see it. And I'm going to call it uh, V underbar palette group 02. All right. And I definitely want to uh, zero that out. Awesome. So in the modify panel, um, with your variant selected, just hit plus and then start selecting the groups. So we got palette group A, palette group B and palette group C, no problem. Whoop, what happened? Palette group B, that's better. All right, and um, we can start cycling through these different palette variations here. And that's what a variant is, so it's pretty cool. 
And then I want to send this whole thing into Omniverse. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to make sure I'm connected to my server. So I click on the user icon in the ribbon here, in the Omniverse ribbon, click sign in. You may have to authenticate to your server. You could also send it to localhost. Uh, either one is fine. Uh, and then um, I can do this a couple ways. So um, if I just want to, well, actually, I want to make sure I click display all here because I want to send them all into Omniverse. And if I export selected and things are hidden, they won't be uh, exported. So I can click on this export to USD button in the ribbon and just need to make sure that my selection is export selected. My default prim is world, I am Z up. Uh, and I'm sending the materials in, so that's great. I'm going to call this palette group 02. Okay, and we'll just wait a second for that to export. All right, that's done. So now I just want to uh, drag this over and half it out because we're gonna do do a little live sync test. So I'll select that. Um, in my folder I created on my Omniverse server, I can see all my stuff is there, so that's great. So I'm gonna open it. And there they are, awesome. And if I select my V underbar palette group, which is my variant, I see that I have my different configurations here. And what's cool is um, I can go into live sync mode in create by clicking the little cloud in your layer icon. Uh, by default, it looks like this. I just separate it out so it looks like that. And then in 3ds Max here, I'm going to click this uh, toggle. And it says uh, it's a live sync toggle. It says, do you want to keep the local source or fetch from Omniverse? So fetching from Omniverse is going to bring in all of uh, the geometry from Omniverse. So if I have any... Uh, modifier stacks or anything, it's going to lose all that. So generally in Max, I like to keep local source because I don't want to cross-pollinate like that. And then once I do that, in Max, I can start... Oh, turn off display all. I can start toggling, and you can see it, it toggles the variants in uh, Create as well. So pretty neat. Okay, and then I don't want to add a checkpoint there. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create... The other three variants, and I'm going to send those into Max, and then we're going to uh, we're going to start building up the the rack with all the palettes inside of Create. All right, see you there. All right, so in this video, we're going to be taking our um, the palettes that we exported from 3ds Max with the variants, and we're going to be added adding physics to them because obviously we want um, these boxes to collapse in the warehouse. And, um, and to do that, we need physics. So the first thing I want to do is um, open up, I open up palette group 01 variants here. And I'm going to go through and um, just switch between the variants. So I have A, B, and C. And I'm going to be adding physics. So switch to palette group A, find A here in my list. And I'm just going to grab all of the objects in A. And I'm going to right click, say add physics, a rigid body with colliders preset. And that'll apply it to all the objects. And then I can scroll down here and verify that um, I have rigid body in my properties. Rigid body enabled, it's not kinematic, convex hull is fine. All right, awesome. Then I want to uh, switch back to my palette group B here. Grab those guys, right click, add. Physics, rigid body with colliders preset. Good. And then C. That, right click, add. Physics, rigid body with colliders preset. All right. So we can just do a quick little test here. If I right click and say create physics, uh, actually, I want to save this before I do this. So I'll save it. And then uh, I'll just right click in here, create physics ground plane. And if I press the space bar, you can see that the boxes have settled and I can hold shift and just drag. And um, and all, all my stuff has uh, proper physics, which is great. Okay. 
so I don't want that. I don't want to save that or anything. So that is how uh, we're going to add physics. And I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other uh, two variant files. All right, so now that we have our palettes set up with uh, physics, palettes and boxes, uh, what I'd like to do is make sure that when the materials get updated in, I'm sorry, when the textures get updated in Painter, that those uh, those textures apply uh, to the materials uh, in my stage and in actually in the aggregated stage with all the boxes and racks and stuff like that. So uh, to do that, we're just going to make a new stage. And we're going to take our palette group 01 variants. And we're going to drop that in as a layer. So let's make sure, though, we're Z up in our layer. And we are. And you do that by clicking the root layer in your layer tab. And you can see that uh, world axis is Z. So that's great. And then I'm going to take uh, the box materials that we created earlier. And I'm going to drop that into my layer uh, tab as well. So now that box materials is sitting as an over on the uh, palette group 01 variants. And uh, this is really good because if I need to make changes to this palette in 3ds Max and resend it into Omniverse, uh, I'm going to wind up writing overwriting this um, this variants file. But because the box materials is sitting as an over as an overlayer, uh, in this stage that I'm creating, anything I do in Max is not going to affect uh, the materials in. Um, in the stage because I'm only going to be affecting this variance file, but the uh, the changes to the materials are actually going to be living as deltas in the root layer. So that's, uh, that's really, really awesome. The only thing I need to do now is I need to go in and uh, I'm going to look in my looks folder and you can see I have these M underbars, which came from Max, and then the T underbars, which came from Painter. So I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to right click on the material. First one, which is C. And I'm going to say select bound objects. And I'm going to change that to T underbar C1. And that's good. A, select bound objects. And T underbar A1. B, select bound objects. B1. Okay, this is great. And that's done. And I'll show you here that all of those changes that I, all the material changes I just made are captured as overs in the, um, in the root layer. So again, I can export from Max all I want into this palette group 01 variants file. Uh, and it, it can change and update and do things, no problem. But my material changes are always stored in this uh, root layer. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this as, and that we're working locally. We have the finished project project on the server, so I'm just working locally here to uh, show you the example. And that, and we want palette variants, and palette variants, palette zero one variants underbar materials. Save. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other um, two variant files that I have, and then we'll start assembling the rack.